dear students welcome to epg patshala i am professor mp stija retired recently from the department of library and information science guru nanak dev university amritsar today we are going to discuss classification as a logical activity and a process of daily routine you will be rather surprised to know that classification is not a subject of library science you are not learning classification after taking admission in this course classification you have been doing since your birth since classification is a neural activity classification is going on every moment in the society and in every living organization maybe a system mechanical bio or electrical social has to classify without classification nothing can exist it is a classification which brings order in a chaos and it is rightly said that order is the first law of nature and this order is only introduced by classification classification simply speaking is nothing but making classes that is groups and a group is a class having at least one similarity in common and then it may have many more similarities but at least it should have one characteristics or the basis of division or making group that should be common among all the groups for example all the indians more than 100 crore indians make one class that is all indians among them let all punjabis make make one more class all the gujaratis make another one class and after that we can make we can go on making classes and classes by dividing uh, into sub groups these are all classes and we have to classify everything to simplify it understand it and comprehend it without classification a society cannot cannot exist without classification uh, any organization cannot exist it cannot work it cannot proceed so classification is the basis of life it classification is the base, basis of social life classification is the basis of uh, economic life classification is the basis of even biological life here we will discuss the process of making groups that is logical or need based then we will study the scope of classification that i am to repeat that is universal it it is required in every sector of life and society then lastly we will also study some problems of classification introduction classification is the process of making classes of entities of any sort a class is a set of groups of entities both abstract and concrete having at least one common similarity that's known as characteristics for example all the students of a class a big or small class of any religion any caste coming from different states or regions or even countries speaking different languages having different political ideologies have one characteristics in common that is all of them are candidates for the same degree meanings of classification classification is a process of grouping of similar or like entities it may be noted that there can be no grouping without division as there can be no shadow without light or no parting without meeting it means grouping and divisions are the same thing therefore grouping implies division grouping and division are two sides of the same coin we add a member to a group by separating it from other in the process of grouping or regrouping therefore grouping and division are the basic process of classification but classification is more than endless grouping and subgrouping after grouping starts the process of ranking that is arranging members of a group in a sequence that is known as intra classification even a small family can be divided further by status or by age of its group members various manifestations of classification grouping and division seem primitive or elemental process of classification looking at the bottom classification is correlation or discovering relations between entities all members of a group are related to one another by some commonality when we admit an entity into a group a relation between the entity and the group is discovered or created classification organization since grouping and intergrouping 
ranking or acts of organization such classification is organization in fact classification and organizations are inseparable now classification is considered as a tool for organizing in every sense of the word since organizations have structure so classification is structuring and mapping classification is matching and pairing this is implied in grouping of entities brought together when we are ranking and arranging we are sorting and tabulating so matching tabulating and sorting are acts of classification uses of classification in daily life routines classification is a mental act and logical process of association and relations it goes on every moment of our life knowingly or unknowingly deliberately or unconsciously it is this fundamental preoccupation of life higher the life complex the classification any system be it biological man social government libraries institutions or mechanical computers machine has to classify for successful functioning all human beings whatever they do have to classify in every sense of the, of the word more sophisticated and intelligent persons have better sense of classification uses of classification in daily life routines in everyday life since morning till evening when we are conscious we are classifying without classifying consciously or unconsciously the life will not be organized or it will be impossible for example let's take a small example of postman postman classifies postal items for efficient and timely delivery that's management saving of time for quick efficient and easy delivery a postal item is sorted classified many times at different stages between posting and delivery for example at the railway station in every city the post is divided into regions then regions into cities when all the postal items come into a city general post office then they are sorted into various mohallas or sectors of the city then they are handed over to sub post offices and in the sub post offices they are handed over to the postman postman again divides every item according to the street number and the house number if that's not done in that way the postman will have to run this way and that way from one street to another street and will not be able to deliver the items very proficiently efficiently and in time so that is also a sort of classification that postman has to put items in order for uh, delivering them into one sequence that is saving of time note let us take another category again that is comes under management that a fruit seller has to sort his fruits into categories see oranges apples grapes and so on they will look better otherwise it will be chaos further each group of apples is further sorted into species say kashmiri apple shimla apples golden apples green apples etc it it doesn't stop here a good fruit seller has to further classify each item for example apples or even kashmiri apples by quality medium quality low quality or high quality and that will give a better chance to the customers to select the items and that is again a process of classification a time saving and better management so in one way that is classification is a tool for management similarly a housewife has to classify the items in the kitchen for better sorting and for better getting it in time scope of classification there is no act of life where classification is not used it is applied everywhere being a neural activity it is a basic process to learn and develop opposite of classification is disorder and chaos classification can be done of all objects entities actions thoughts and concepts we can classify people countries natural phenomena plants flowers animals libraries philosophies literature artifacts automobiles and what not it is a universal constant it is the only method to simplify understand and comprehend a complex universe to discover its structure and impose some order over the otherwise chaotic world classification is knowledge creation english philosopher john s mill says classification facilitates the operation of the mind in clearly conceiving and retaining in memory the nature of an entity or phenomena someone has aptly and axiomatically defined 
empirical science as a systematic classification of experiences. Therefore, classification is training of the mind. Eminent educator John Dewey was of the opinion that all knowledge is classification. Brian Bushnan quotes another English philosopher W. S. Jeevans as saying that all knowledge, all reasoning, so far as it deals with general names or general notions may be said to consist in classification. Scientists seek recurring patterns, that is, generalizations in nature. Knowledge advances when a pattern is discovered, that is classification. A new idea becomes knowledge only when it is related with some past knowledge. All researchers cite references to previous works for acceptance of their research. Information becomes knowledge when given some context and structure, that is classification. Thus, concepts, information, knowledge, and classification are inherently related. It is often said that to learn is to classify, and classifying is itself an education. It sharpens our thinking, clarity, and expression, and makes us exact in every way, says Ranganathan. Process of Classification As already said, classification is a process of correlation. It is a discovery. It is a way of thinking, thinking systematically and purposefully. It is an aid to memory and reasoning. And nothing can be identified without it. It means to define an entity is to classify it first. For example, a gun is a firearm, a chair is a piece of furniture, a car belongs to the class of vehicles, and so on. All thoughts and reasoning underpin some process of classification and vice versa. A group is divided or a member is included into a group on the basis of some characteristic. A characteristic is an attribute, quality, or property of an entity which relates it with or separates it from a group. Classification itself is genus-species relation. A genus is a class, and species is a subclass, and subclass is created by adding a difference to the genus. For example, tables. There are many kinds of tables. But when we add the difference, that is material, we get many tables just like glass tables, wooden tables, plastic tables, metal tables. And here material is a characteristic to divide the universe of tables. Here table is a genus, material is the difference, and glass tables, wooden tables, etc. are species of table. Ancient philosophers applied dichotomous method to divide the universe into two groups at every step. Greek philosopher Porphyry used this method and the resulting groups and subgroups are spontaneously known as tree of periphery. But this classification has become outdated now or very simple, and the modern classification is very complicated, and at the same time we have to add so many characteristics for a good classification. Division by dichotomy, or division into two. It is a form of very primitive or old classification which divides all the entities of the universe into two groups at every step. For example, let us see. All the entities, living or dead, were divided into two kinds, that is concrete and abstract. Then concrete is again divided into inorganic and organic. Then organics are further divided into living and non-living. Living are further divided into plants and animals, further divided into vertebrates and invertebrates. Vertebrates are again divided into humans and animals. Humans are further divided into males and females. And further, such a classification goes on. But it may be noted that such classifications were primitive and not very logical. Because, for example, uh, uh, among living, we said plants and animals. But scientists say that there are also uh, some more species which are neither living nor, nor, nor dead or neither uh, animals nor plants. Similarly, among males and females, now the law and the society accepts the third gender is also there. Uh, among adults, we said young and old. Old people are again divided into society by middle-aged people, old people, senior citizens. So what I mean is that this classification of division by dichotomy is no more useful or no more working. And this has led to classification by multiple methods which have been solved by the faced classification. The Cotomus method was very simple and primitive. Now the classification is faced 
and you can divide an entity into many species at the same time. For example, literature can be divided by languages and we can get English literature, French literature, German literature, Spanish literature, Sanskrit literature and so on. Then further, literature can also be divided by form. For example, poetry, drama, fiction, essays, styles and so on. Similarly, we can go on making species and subspecies at a different levels until we get a very minute classification. Though classification pervades all life and no life can exist without classification, but at the same time, classification has also its problems. And it has been well said that classification is a logical absurdity because everything cannot be classified absolutely. Classifications are relative, not absolute. No classification exists in nature. Classifications are even man-made because classifications are made to purpose. But despite all these activities, it may be no noted that there is no substitute for classification. Without classification, the world will be a chaos, not order that we require. Nature of classification. Classification is meant for simplification, but in itself, it looks a very long drawn and complex process. Then there are many myths about classification. But logically speaking, classificatory groups are not absolute. Classifications are relative or something is classified with reference to others. Classification cannot be done in itself. An entity cannot be classified or ranked in itself. It takes two to create a classification. It means a unique entity cannot be classified. It is a class of its own, a unique class. No classification is absolute also means that classifications are not permanent. They are changing. Classifications are not real even. Classifications are man-made. No classification exists in nature. All classifications are man-made or have a social purpose and have some technical purpose too. No classification is good or bad. Classifications are unhelpful or helpful to a varying degree. It all depends upon the purpose of classification. Earlier it was thought that classification may be wrong, classification may be right, or classifications are good or bad. But it all depends on the purpose or the logic. The logic is how to apply the characteristics. A classification which serves its purpose well is the best, whether logical or not. Because sometimes man looks very unreasonable and they appear, but they have got their own purpose and that is also a sort of classification. Utility of classification depends upon the characteristics chosen and the order in which these are applied, speaking technically. Classification can only be wrong if the characteristics applied is wrong one or they are not applied in a sequence. But classification can be right if it is applied very consciously and it depends what purpose you want to have from that classification. Classification as a tool. According to Aristotle, Classification is a theoretical, practical, and productive science. As the saying goes, theory is the most applied knowledge. We can arguably say that classifications are always practical and designed for some purpose. It means that there is no theoretical classification. Every classification has some practical purpose, whatever it may be. Classification is a tool for simplification, comprehension, understanding, and organization. Without organization, classification will not work and vice versa. All the uses of classification may be summed up as follows. It is a tool for management. It is aesthetics. It is knowledge creation. For example, in aesthetics, if a lady is choosing the shoes that she is wearing to suit her dress, that is classification. In a house, a lady is selecting the curtain for the house to match with the sofa. That is also aesthetics. And aesthetics is for pleasing and to give you good feelings, that is also the purpose of classification. And knowledge creation. Classification creates knowledge as we do in libraries, as we do in taxonomy. Philosophers classify knowledge to create more knowledge and to create and to see the gaps in knowledge. That is also one purpose of classification. And of course, with classification, we save time. We simplify things. That is a tool for management. So it means that classification is always practical. It is never theoretical. Knowledge classification. Classification can be of any object, phenomena, concept, process, or acts. Classification and categorization of knowledge per se is called knowledge classification. Thinkers in all ages 
since Aristotle, have to categorize knowledge to understand its nature, categories, boundaries, and growth. That became knowledge classification. And with knowledge classification, we can also understand the extent of knowledge, the gaps in knowledge, and also the nature of knowledge. Classification of knowledge is outlining and mapping to depict structure and boundaries of knowledge. It leads to better understanding of its history, nature, kinds, properties, growth, and also gaps in it. So it is a map of the knowledge. Thus, knowledge grows by its own classification. It becomes a guide for the educationists, scientists, librarians to create more knowledge and to serve knowledge better. Knowledge classification is both speculative, that is theoretical, and empirical, that is practical, and is a province of philosophers and scholars. From time to time, philosophers, scientists, educationists, and other likes have formally categorized entire known knowledge to outline its boundary and show the structure of knowledge. To conclude, we can say classification is an old and very primitive activity of mankind, especially of every life on this earth, which pervades all sectors of our organized society, even of biological life too. It is a, its scope is wide as classification has got many meanings from simple grouping to mapping or creating relations among entities. Classification is logical, but classification is always practical. Uh, it's not theoretical. Though classification is used in all sorts of systems and by people to organize life, but uh, the uses of classification, the numerous uses of classification can be uh, divided or grouped into basically three major uh, activities. One is that classification is a tool for management. That is to organize. Organize everything. Organize our life activities. Organize our systems. Organize our economic systems. Organize our biological systems. Organize our life on this earth. And then classification is also used for aesthetics to produce uh, feelings of good and beauty. That is the science of beauty aesthetics. And lastly, classification is a tool for creativity uh, in creation of knowledge. And uh, that's why it's known classification has been known as a tool for knowledge organization that we will study in our next uh, lesson.